Hello, Internet user. My name is Gary of Gary's Wares. I make wooden pipes out of exotic hardwoods. And today, I'm going to be going over the basics of pipe making. Some of you people on YouTube are not doing the right thing. Like, some of you people are not just making bad pipes. You're making pipes that are, like, toxic and, like, that have glue in the bowl. And you don't do that. You don't do that. There's things you do you don't do. I'm going to be going over that, the physics of pipes, and that sort of thing. And here we go. This is a pipe. Well, this is a picture of a pipe. As you can see, um, here's the bowl, here's the material, the flame, and the uh, the air passage. Um, the way that it works, quite obviously, is you inhale, and it draws the flame into the material, material combusts, and then you inhale the smoke. This is a chillum, and you'll see that, you see, the only difference is there's a bend in a pipe, and there's not one in the chillum. That's the only difference. Now, when you make your bowl, you want the hole to be concave or convex, depending on how you look at it. And to do that, you're going to need a you're going to need to drill with a core box bit, um, and you don't want to use like a Forstner bit because then stuff gets caught in the side. Uh, this is not the way that you want to do a pipe. Uh, it's wasteful. And to prove it, I have put together this. I made a, a series of half inch holes, one with a regular bit, one with a brad point bit, one with a Forstner bit, one with a spade bit, and one with the core box bit. I'm going to load each of these holes up with tobacco and run it through my shop vac and see what I come up with. Here are the holes, and you can see that a lot of material was left behind by the first three, which were a regular bit, brad point bit, and a Forstner bit. Um, that's because they each have a ledge. The spade bit didn't have much left behind, but um, it's not a very good design for a pipe for a number of reasons, and I think a lot of the reason that there's not much left is because I had a shop vac attached to it. Here's the core box bit, and there's nothing left but ash, and it all fell out on the table. So this is the best choice, clearly. The type of wood that you use is very important because some woods have chemicals in them that when heated, get released, like zebra wood. One time I tried to make a pipe out of zebra wood. That was a mistake. One time I tried to make a, a pipe out of orange agate. That was a bigger mistake. So there's some woods that you can use and some woods that you can't. And tobacco pipes, the most popular wood to use is briar, but the thing with briar is that briar blanks cost about 20 bucks a blank. So, I use pipemedia.org, which isn't necessarily an authority on the subject, but these guys clearly know more and have thought about pipe making more than I have. Um, they put together an alternative list for woods, um, as opposed to using briar since it's so expensive. Um, this is a pretty good list. There's a lot of uh, good domestic choices, um, maple, cherry, walnut, oak, um, you know, things like that, things that you can find pretty easily. Um, but by far the, the most popular choice is cherry. Cherry is very good. Uh, it's got a lot of good qualities. It's not as good as briar, but it's not nearly as expensive. Here's some ebony pipes that I made. This one's an unfinished pipe. This one's a chillum with some hemp wick wrapped around it. Um, so you can use different stuff and, uh, it won't make you sick like zebra wood or orange agate wood. Um, this is a briar pipe that I bought. Um, and briar is very good, but you can abuse it. I smoked too much, too fast, and it got too hot, and it burned out, which is a which is one of the concerns when picking your wood. You don't want to pick a wood that's going to burn out or make you sick. Well, first make you sick, and you don't want that's going to burn out very quickly. And so even with briar, um, it could burn out um, at, if you abuse it. Um, this pipe is mine and I've been using it for uh, about six months and it started off looking about like this um, but over time over about six months of daily use it's kind of corroded on the inside and it's not much of a bowl and if it wasn't for a screen it wouldn't be working at all so I'm going to have to replace it eventually but choosing your wood is very important next I'm going to show you how to make a pill bottle pipe out of some cherry and Final product is going to look like this, and you want to start off with a blank that is 
two or one by one by two. And so I started off with a blank that was two by two by six and uh, cut it down to size from there. Um, now the problem with with blanks is that they're not they don't come square necessarily. And if you think they're square, you better check because they probably aren't. This one it was way off, as you can see. And so, as such, the blanks are going to have to be shaped before um, I could draft them and, and start work on them. And this is going to come in, in handy later. You absolutely have to square them. Um, I picked the outside edge, and I'm going to count that as straight. And I'm going to use that to square this side. And I'm going to use the same edge to square the other side, as opposed to using this side. Squaring can be a real pain sometimes. Anyway, so I'm going to square these and come back. The blanks have been squared, and I have marked them. And what I did is I measured each side, and I drew the halfway point and connected that. Then I took my stencil, and I marked uh, an inch, and I used the lines to, find, to mark the center. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole right where they intersect with my brad point bit, and that's going to be the pilot hole for the bowl. The pilot holes have been drilled, and at this point, the bowl location is pretty well locked in, so if you didn't nail it, you're going to have to go back and start over. Next, I'm going to drill the bowl with this bit, and this is, um, it's, I te technically it's not a core box bit, because this is a core box bit. A core box bit just makes a concave hole, um, and it doesn't have a thing on the bottom. This has a thing on the bottom, and I don't know what to call this thing. But this thing is very handy for beginning pipe makers because it gives you a start on the air passage and it gives you something to shoot for. It's pretty wide as far as that goes and that will certainly help you out later. If that weren't there, it would be a little trickier, but I'll get into how to doing that later. Next, I'm going to drill the bowl. The bowl's been drilled. Now it's time to drill the air passage. And this is where your squaring really matters because the drill press, the drill bit just comes straight down at a 90 degree angle. So if your blank is a bit off one way or the other, it's still going to go straight down and you're going to end up missing it. Even if it's off just a little, that's going to make a difference. So the way that I determine the depth is I take an awl and I stick it into the bowl as deep as it'll go, just like that without you know actually making a new hole and then I use my fingers and determine the depth like that now this seems like a crude method of doing this but I've yet to miss doing it this way knock on wood so um, you're gonna want to start with a brad point bit but you're gonna want to finish with a regular bit because a regular bit has a uh, a more forgiving tip it's not as sort of destructive and you're gonna want that when you get down to here because it well, you have to drill to a very specific depth that if you go much farther than that, you can screw the pipe up. So, here we go. Ear passages have been drilled, and as you can hear, it's clear. So at this point, it is a pipe, um, but it's not very pretty looking. So, next comes a bit more drafting. What I did is I drew a circle around the air passage hole, and I drew a line marking the edge of that stem. And also what I did is I put a mark marking the edge of the bowl. And on this side, I drew a line connecting these two. And this is going to be cut off with my scroll saw. After that, I'm going to take uh, my oscillating spindle sander to it, and I'm going to shape it. Here are the pipes at various stages of shaping. First thing you want to do is cut the excess off like we were talking about. Then you want to shape it down and get the get a nice curve going on the top. Um, then draw lines that will show you how thick the stem is. Then you cut this excess away and you're left with this. From there, you shape around the lines, try to get as close as you can, you'll get something like this. Then you go to the, the circle that you drew around the air passage and shape that and that'll give you a basic diameter um, for the stem and you can continue on shaping it properly like that 
And after, at this point, um, you want to kind of make it look a little better and make it look a bit more like a pipe. Now, the thing that makes these pill bottle pipes is that they can fit inside of pill bottles. This is a little snug, but we've still got some sanding to go. And that's okay because you can always take more away, but you can't add more. So this is basically how you do it. And uh, now all it needs is a final sanding and some finish. And this particular pipe is ready to go. I still have these to left to shape. And now we're something slightly different. Next, I'm going to show you how to make one of these, what I call a mini carb pipe. Before I do, let me go quickly over the physics of carb pipes. Now, this is my, my pipe, which is a, a chambered pipe, and I've had it for a while, like I said before. And the way that it is internally is like this. And you'll see that with, um, with all chambered pipes, they have basically the same three components. You have a bowl a chamber and a stem and of course an air passage leading between all of these. Um, this is how all carbureted pipes work. Here's my glass pipe and you can see that all of the components are basically there. You've got the bowl right here. Uh, you've got the chamber which is the whole hollow part of the inside of the pipe and you've got the stem which is part of the chamber which is a really elegant sort of solution to how to do this sort of design um, and the carb which I haven't mentioned yet now the way that the carb works is what happens is um, sort of stage one is you put your finger over the carb and that means that all airflow comes through the bowl and what happens is when you inhale uh, the chamber fills up with smoke and it kind of cools it and collects it and um, stage two is sort of you taking your finger off the carb and then that uh, all that smoke comes at once uh, through the stem. What I'm making is one of these, and it, uh, like I said, I call it a mini carb pipe, and it's gonna be about three inches long, so it's gonna be about an inch longer than um, the pipe we made before. And uh, this internally is how it works. You know, you've got the bowl here, and you've got the chamber here, and um, the stem over here. The carb will be drilled later. It's not very, it doesn't matter that much where it goes just so long as it goes towards this side of it so that it clears, it, it, it effectively clears it better. So, here we go. So the first step is milling and squaring. Now before when I was talking about wood selection, I was specifically talking about the bowl that you use. Uh, the stem can be anything. Uh, tobacco pipes use like some kind of acrylic rubber stuff. Um, it doesn't really matter about the stem. What matters is where all the heat happens and so therefore the bowl matters. And that mattered a whole lot with our last pipe because it's all one piece. Um, the, like, so the stem is going, for this one, is going to be made out of black and white ebony. Um, so uh, after you mill it and square it, and I've gone over how important all that is, um, drafting, uh, draw an inch wide circle on the bowl. Um, and then... Um, um, draw an inch wide circle on this and then a three quarters hole for the uh, Forster bit which we're going to drill later and an inch wide uh, circle on the other side and off we go the bowl holes have been drilled as I showed you before with how to make the pill bottle pipe you start with a pilot hole and then you drill with that bit um, and then you drill the air passage like that next comes the um, chamber now, um, as shown here, I'm going to drill down to one and three eighths inch with a Forstner bit, and that's going to give me a big wide chamber in here. Um, and so that is the next step. The chamber hole has been drilled, and uh, this is where drafting carefully really pays off. Uh, when you bring your Forstner bit down, uh, just bring it down just a little bit just to make sure that you're lining up with the line that you already drew. If you're not, reposition uh, your piece and drill correctly because if you don't then you could drill through the side then that's no fun uh, i've also drilled the uh, air passage hole next i'm going to shape the stem slash chamber and i'm going to do it on my oscillating spindle sander and i'm going to do it using this uh, uh bit of um uh, what do you call one of these things we the hang up clothes on a clothes hanger there you go and what you do what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this up to like the sanding belt and it's going to be able to, I'm going to shape according to that circle 
and that circle, and it's going to come out round. Here's the chamber after it's been uh, shaped, and now it's ready to be glued. Now, if you're going to make a pipe that is going to use glue in some way, you want to make sure that it is as far away from where the heat takes place as possibly as you can get it. Um, wood act, reacts in a very predictable way when exposed to heat. Glue, on the other hand, may not um who knows what sort of toxic nonsense it would release and you don't want to be smoking that so you want to keep wood well away from the bowl i you know what i saw a youtube video of this guy who wanted to make a pipe by cutting it right in half and then gluing it back together don't do that keep glue away from from the heat as far as possible and this is good enough that that works just fine so i'm going to glue this part on and clamp it and come back when it's done the glue is dried and now it's ready to be shaped and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shape this corner and this corner on the um, edging attachment of the oscillating spindle center but I'm going to use the actual sp uh, oscillating spindle center to shape the mouthpiece and this line is 3 eighths of an inch and the inside should come to I don't know somewhere in here in there something like that I don't know uh, but this is plenty of room it won't cut into the uh, the chamber and mess up the pipe because that would mess it up and that would be no good um yeah so i'm gonna go shape that here's something fun um the sharp eye out there might notice the problem right away. I made the mouthpiece on the wrong side. The mouthpiece is meant to go like this. Um, so this is actually something I can recover from pretty easily. I'm going to take it back to the oscillating sander and sort of round this out. <laughs> Man, this is what happens when you don't pay attention. It may come out even looking cooler, but... <laughs> if you don't ew, man, it could have been worse so I'm going to go take care of that and um, come back right now that I've uh, somewhat recovered from that um, it's not too bad and it kind of looks cool with the, the, the grain and everything so that didn't turn out to be too bad um, I've drawn some lines um, to help me shape it and this is a, a three quarter inch line or around a circle around the bowl and that's going to help me shape it and next I'm going to go to work on it with a rotary tool. So I've shaped the pipe with a rotary tool and I've uh, taken the, all the way to fine grit. And now I'm gonna take, uh, put some actual, um, actually sand it by hand. Um, I've drilled the uh, the carb up here um, and that's about the right place you wanna do it. And so now I'll come back with it sanded and finished. And here it is, finished, sanded and ready to go. And you see it's about an inch longer than the pipe that we made uh, before. Now, one of the things about the, these two pipes is that these projects are specific to this bit, or this bit is specific to this project, depending on how you want to look at it. Now, this is a part of the Dremel uh, 692 six-piece router set, and I highly recommend picking that up, considering the price, um, and uh, apparently the core box bit is part 617. So... Um, that is that you definitely need to make these with and the thing about this bit that makes um that makes it so much easier is this little part right here now this is meant to go on the edge of something and not meant to cut anything at all and it's meant to be like a sort of a buffer between what you want to cut and what you don't want to cut um but when you're making a, a pipe i almost fell down the hole when you're making a pipe um this little part right here is very handy for drilling the air passage and hitting it and nailing it um when you're making a tobacco pipe that's somewhat more difficult which is what i'm going to show you next and it's the last thing the bowl of the tobacco pipe is much uh much wider and is capable of holding a lot more than um the other pipes that i made and so um it you should be able to get to you should be able to get your finger in there um i use a 5 8 inch core box bit to to do it um this I think is about seven eighths or maybe about an inch. I think it's a bit less than an inch, so it's probably about seven eighths. 
Uh, and the reason for this uh, is tobacco pipes work a bit differently than other pipes because they what happens in a tobacco pipe is that the tobacco smolders and so it smolders it basically it's like a little hot coal that the tobacco bowl has to handle and so it's constant heat and that's why briar is such a good choice cherry is also a good choice um, but the so that's why bowl the, the thickness of your bowl wall matters with my pipe um, I should have this this is a, on my on my, on on the real pipe it's like uh, just less than an inch and I should have made the bowl about an inch and a and a half maybe an inch and a quarter um, to, to considering how much I use it and considering how much heat it has to take because when you subject it to large amounts of heat this part right in here takes a lot of abuse and it sort of becomes a funnel which is not exactly the best it's not exactly the best so you want to start off with a thick bowl wall so here we go so I have this piece of cherry with this really gnarly knot in it I've been wanting to make a bowl out of it forever and this video is a good reason to do it so I'm gonna just drill the bowl and I'm not gonna make the entire pipe um, because I don't know exactly what I want to do with this um, but it will be a tobacco type uh, bowl the bowl I think is about an inch and a half and the the bowl the bowl thickness the total diameter of the bowl is about an inch and a half and the uh, bowl interior is uh, five eighths of an inch which is the size of my core box bit and I'm going to drill down about a, an inch and a quarter and this is the real trick this is where squaring really matters because um, if you're off just a little bit then this connection isn't made and then you have a piece of scrap wood and i hope i don't make a piece of scrap wood out of this because this is a really cool piece of wood so i paid extra careful attention to the uh, squaring and uh, what i found out was this edge was not exactly square but that's okay because this is square this is square the bottom square when it's drilled it's going to be like this and so this little bit of error isn't going to matter that much because it's going to be square on the bottom and square on the sides and um, it's going to work that way so next up is the next thing the next thing you want to do is drill a starter hole for the bowl using a forstner bit the reason you do this is because of a phenomenon known as walking where you'll take a bit like a core box bit that doesn't have a brad point tip on it and you'll drill into the wood and it will sort of go wherever it wants um, you want to avoid that especially when drilling the bowl now if i haven't mentioned it before you always want to align your bowl with the end grain of the wood that's very important because the end grain is tough stuff and you want your bowl to be tough should have mentioned that earlier but i didn't so first thing you do is you drill the starter hole and it doesn't matter about a quarter of an inch whatever and then you drill the bowl when you're drilling the bowl you want to position the wood as carefully as you can the first thing you want to do is get your wood so that it's just lined up so it's just above uh, the level of the of the bowl then you um, if you have a laser sight on your laser sight if you've got lasers on your uh, drill press this would be helpful to uh, to line the point up with the very center point of the of the uh, Forstner bit but if you don't have that that's all right what you want to do is you want to take the bit and take it down and rotate the bit and make sure that it doesn't touch any of the sides and make sure it's as centered as you can like that and after that then you're clear to drill the bowl the bowl has been drilled now if you notice there's a little ledge right toward the top that's where the forstner bit stopped and the core box bit started uh, that can be taken away with a with some very careful sanding you don't want to mess with the inside of the bowl too much though um, and you see down toward the bottom there's some like scoring a bit of charring uh, that happened because the core box bit got a whole bunch of sawdust caught in the middle of it and it, it started like scorching the inside of it. You want to avoid doing that um, if at all possible. Other pipe makers make um, their bowls with uh, specialized spade bits that have been ground to a very specific uh, like angle. Uh, I don't have that and you can't really buy one of those and so this is the best option. 
When you use a core box bit, you want to make sure that you go slowly and you clear away as much sawdust as you can. Otherwise, it'll get compacted in there and things will start to burn and that's no good. The next step is drilling the air passage and you're really going to have to count on your drafting, so make sure that it's good. Uh, you want to start off with a brad point bit, but you definitely want to finish with a, a regular bit because the regular bit is going to go into the inside of the bowl and uh, if it's too... If it's a brad point bit, it's going to take away too much and it's not going to work with the aerodynamics of the pipe. It's going to make it not work as good. So start with a brad point bit, end with a regular bit. Here it is after the air passage has been drilled. And as you can see through the light, it, it works. Um, I, and this actually was a very near miss. The air passage came in just under the bowl and it was just close enough to where I could poke my awl through there. And it came out just, it came out actually a lot better than I could have, could have managed it. Um, so, so that works. So yeah, that is how you do it. At this point, the bowl can be shaped into whatever pipe you want to make it into. I'm not totally sure what I want to do with this, this uh, bowl just yet. So I'm going to wait and hold off on that. But um, I hope this video has been helpful in showing you how to make pipes and give you the basics. And um, well, my name is Gary. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. Um, please, uh, and if you like my stuff, check me out on Facebook. My name is Gary, and I'm out.